just when I'm away on holiday and stuff like that just so simple little things and that's what I tend to do if I'm outside sketching and this, this to me makes my holiday just put in a little sketchbook full of these little paintings and pictures and things different places that I go to and little memories I've got there but for demonstration purposes today I'm using a larger sheet of paper so you can have a go with that um, I'll pick this spot this particular one because I like the locks and I like the um, church in the background there that's Warwick Church in the background um, so it just depends on how much you want to do with that because you could start putting buildings in the side there um, all sorts of things so again I'm going to start camera and use this as our modern viewfinder these days because uh, if I just zoom in and one it there's two things for doing this one I can take a picture so if it starts to rain or the weather changes I can go home and finish it um, but it also helps me to decide what I want to paint and I can't see very well because the sun's straight in my eyes there if you can zoom in on something it makes you focus on what it is you're going to paint because when you come to a scene like this you'll, you get distracted by all these different bits all around the side you think oh I don't know where to stop the picture so with that I just want to focus on the couple of locks and then get that recession with the, the background in there so you've got to work out a little bit of measurement really a bit of angles and measurement in there to get your locks and things in the foreground so I'm just going to go for it with these just get my angles in there I'm just saying uh, as I've walked lots of other pictures that do this taking but not that <laughs> What's that one? You've lost it. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Feature came round. It was totally different no. to what. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring it back in a minute. So I'm just putting in the basics of these. When you're doing canals and things, it's it's quite deceptive. The angles. Um, a lot of people get the angles wrong with canals because they, they make them too steep. So they're quite flat because. Uh, although here I'm looking down on it but look at this angle of the, the bank coming towards me here that's a difficult one you, you have the tendency to think oh it's it's quite long like that but actually you just got to keep your pencil upright it's almost upright so it comes towards you that way so it's a, a bit of a funny angle some of these but those are the ones that always seem to throw people when they're doing a, um, a drawing or a painting of such like like that so and then this other little bit comes out a little way. I'm just going to measure the width of that so I can see how far forward it's only a smidgen out of there. And again, the angle of the canal going back is quite deceptive. About like that where it goes in. Oh, little duck walking across the path. That's very pretty. Get him in, draw him quickly. So something like that is where that goes to. It doesn't go up beyond the lock gates. So it just comes out again a bit the other side. So a little bit of Sorry, thanks, <laughs> and again it's another line that comes out and then comes across that way oh, that's, and I'll probably let that fade away I don't know whether I'll start putting the buildings in the side here I'll have a little think probably not because I think that's going to just distract from it there so the trees I'm just going to measure my lock and see how tall the trees are in relation to it not quite as tall as a lock that on that side so because again that's something which so uh, about here somewhere you've got these other bits and bobs on your lock gates which I'm sure Wayne knows of what they are those upright bits Puddles. sorry Puddles. is he there or has he wandered off no, what are the upright bits on the they open the sluice gate. Oh, he's, he's, he's ignoring me. Never mind. Um, right. So we'll just put the other bit of the lock gate, and that's probably about as much drawing. Bit of a tree over here somewhere, and then how far is that up? The distance from there. It's about half that lock width. About half that lock width is where those trees come up. They come up at a nice little angle, and then they'll finish about here somewhere. And then you've got this other nice tree just coming in the corner of it and that's your tall one you've got 
big trees up here. Might move them in a bit so they're not they nice and frame the picture. And they're quite tall, aren't they? So how big are those? There's my lock gates. They're as tall as the lock gates. Ooh, a bit short on that. Need to come up there somewhere. And then we've got this lovely little bit of the the church in the background. Nice bit of Warwick Church there. And just a few trees. I'm not happy with those angles, they're coming up too steep there. So with this with this it is all about the drawing. If with something in the outdoors, if you're just happy to draw and get your drawing accurate, that's enough. You don't have to do a painting. And then that'll come down with a bit of your reflections, maybe reflections of that tree coming into the, the water down here and then that bit. Um, there's another little lock at the back here. I'm only going to put those in because I can't see much more than that anyway. It starts to get a bit confusing with it all. And that'll be it ready for ready for action I think. Still not happy with those angles there, they look a bit wrong somehow. They're quite flat on those bits coming out there. So I think that's probably going to be something like that. Some nice little flowers over in that corner. Right, that's ready for painting now. It could rub out a few of the spare lines, but I won't won't worry too much about it. What? A little set of paints here, just a basic set of paints. Don't need to get all the colours under the sun, you just need it in the basic set down there. Um, I've got two sets of paints. They've just got slightly different colours in some of them to others, that's all. So um, I'll just use one or the other. These are a bit richer and stronger. These are the, the little bits of students' quality one. Um, so I'm going to put a bit of water in there and sometimes it's quite useful just put a bit of water onto your palette just to get it so it flows and again just to put too much on that just a little bit of water just get more juicy and working a little bit more pepper and a drink as well <laughs> at the same time <laughs> so I think that's really nice with the clouds in there today so it's a the clouds that help to give it that bit of recession as well. If you start to look at that sky, you can see the clouds are bigger above your head and they get smaller as they go down to the, the distance there. So, I'll just get my brush on the go. And it's a lovely blue. And I'll probably use a, a cerulean blue for this because it's a nice summery sky blue. And a bit of grey colour. I've already got a bit of grey here, just a bit of ultramarine blue and a touch of burnt umber. A bit, a bit too much water in that palette as well now. Let's just take a bit of that out. A bit of blue, ultramarine blue, burnt umber mix to give me that grey colour that's in there. Airing onto the blue side. Um, you can even put a little bit of Elysian Crimson into that as well, give it a little bit of warmth. Big brush. And I tend to wet the sky all over and right down into the tree area because the sky will go behind the trees here and just going to let that fade away towards the background and then in with my blue it's a lovely bright blue up there so we'll have that cerulean blue for this one or you can mix a bit of ultramarine with it as well to make it a little bit richer leaving some little shapes for fluffy white clouds take it into your trees because you'll see bits of that colouring through the trees and then a little bit more around this area and then as this comes down we'll start to swap to the bluey grey put a bit of that bluey grey into the bottoms of the clouds we have a noisy dog behind us, sorry about that um, um, and then as you come down here you get the clouds go thinner and narrower as they get towards the horizon 
So just push those into the trees. And that's your sky done. You don't want to mess too much with that. It's a little bit more down there. I normally work from background to foreground. The weakest, wettest washes, but I need to put that one in. But I can't do that until um, it's dry. So I'm going to put that in on top in a moment. So I'm using those colours now into the water. So while I've got some, some little horizontal dashes of water where the blue is, leaving some white bits. Okay. <laughs> going in a moment, aren't they? So just some little dashes of the water. Um, just almost clean water, uh, but then I'm just putting a touch of the same colours I've used in the sky into this to start off with. And then when I use another colour, I'll bring that into that as well. Doing the same sort of process. A little bit of clean water. Leave lots of white bits in there but you'll find that this blue shows through all sorts of reflections and things shows through there. Um, very quick wash with that grey where I can see it on the sides here. <coughs> Using the same for the, the bits of the um, walkway on the side here. A little bit of weak yellow ochre for the pathway. Oh, that's what's a bit of ochre, that's a bit of a grubby colour. I'm going to put a bit of that on that side to match. Uh, a bit of that in here as well and a bit of the grey for that pathway. And then we've got a little bit of the yellow ochre colour and a bit of the greens. Uh, this time a little bit of the blue and yellow to make a bit of a greeny colour. That was just ultramarine blue. You can always make this stronger. It's just putting a bit of the colour in there. I'll add a little bit of that over that side as well. And then a little bit of burnt umber on that edge. burnt ember on that edge so it starts to build in the shapes and things that you can see there and as I've got that on my brush now flick it into the water and again I flick a bit of that into the water as well bringing those colours up behind there right now that's dry that's the beauty of working outside it dries really quickly or the pain of working outside because it dries really quickly one of the two so those distant bits in the background there are very uh, blue coloured because of the effect of the air over them so they a little bit of a hint of the very distant background church in there that's all I have to do for that Just take a bit of the puddle out and let it fade away um, and then I can start building up some of the greens from there yellows and blues try using different blues and different yellows to get different shades of green so it's not all the same color and again with these just then a dot on start with my more yellowy green first up to some of those and again With the background, it's less tonal contrast in the background. It stops at the top of those rocks. And more contrast into the foreground. So it's a little bit, hello! Sorry, we're <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> And then I'm going to add a bit more bluey green into that in some places. Whew. It's a very strong smell of something horrible. Every now and again. A bit more blue into some of those so they you get a bit of varying tone into them so that tree is a lot darker than the others there again same with that one a bit below this a bit underneath that one and that'll do from the background trees um, and then we'll start to do the 
starting to do some of these other trees here. And these are a bit more detailed, so you want the paint a bit stronger. So just increase that colouring a bit more with your, your bluey green mix. It's quite a bright, it's quite top, tops of it are quite yellowy. So I'm going to just put in some, use the brush now a bit more to give a bit more descriptive, leave some open bits in it as well. So you get a bit more mark making with that to get the shape of the tree. So you have a bit of the brighter yellowy green. And then you'll have a, as it goes towards the centre, it'll get darker. So you add the bluey green into the middle of that tree to give it a bit more shape in there. And give it one tree against another. And then perhaps add a bit more of the yellowy green again to give you that other band of light coming through there. So letting them run in and join together. But these, this should be stronger than those background ones. So when you get into this dark now, you want some really strong dark. And I tend to, you can swap your green now to a bit of um, burnt sienna and perhaps um, a Prussian blue or something like that to give you a very strong dark bluey green colour. Which will give it some punch and give you the contrast into those. I'm still quite wet with that, so it's bringing it up. Starting to give them the contrast with those, and I've got a little bit of the background. This is in shadow down here. I'll put that in. A little bit of shadow under the, the bank below the tree. And just put something just be in there in that background bit. And then the same on this one. This is a lot more open on this side, this tree. So just smaller brush marks. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Job in the tube and smaller. <laughs> And this is, this is a lot more open, so it's not quite, it's a bit more of a silhouette as well. So you don't get quite so much colour variation. There is a bit of yellowy green in there, but it's a lot more the stronger, darker bluey green as well. And again, this nice, strong dark will stand out against the... the foreground, getting it darker and darker down the bottom here and this again will make the lock gates stand out when you start to get the, the darks in behind it. I probably want a bit of um, other colours behind this one as well because they've got some different greens just put it into the setting and then it's a bit nice and dark and then a bit more of another greeny tree over that side. Because this is far away over this side, I'm not going to worry too much about the bits. So I'll just let that fade away to the background over there. Right, just need to pull in a few little bits around the, the locks themselves. Just a little bit underneath the tree there, because that's a, where I can see underneath it. I'm not going to put all the cars in the car park, but just a bit of the green there. Um, as I've got this, this green on here, start to look at where it's reflecting into the, the water just below it. It's not quite as dark as that, so a little bit of water with my, my colour now, so it's not quite so dark. But we do need a bit of this dark colour reflecting into this water, to where that tree is reflecting down here. And as it comes away from the tree, it breaks up, so you get less and less of the... It's more solid as it's closer to the tree, a bit in that water as well there. And again, there's a bit of that yellowy green one just starting to show, actually, I think it's more the building that you can see there. A little bit of that one over here. Can't see this one because it's too off the, the picture there. Um, right, so I'm just going to swap to a slightly smaller brush because I've been using a big round brush for most of that. Um, make up a, a dark colour now with ultramarine blue, burnt umber to give me a nice dark tone. And this time I'm going to keep it onto the brownie side because I'm going to put those lock gates in. I'm trying to leave a little bit of light on top of the lock so. Um, we can start to build up these dark bits here and just trying to leave a little bit of the light on top to give it that shape. A bit the, the white bit underneath, I've left that, I might have to work behind that a minute, in a minute to bring that out. The two little bits in the middle are, are white as well, so they're not completely white, they'll have a little bit of shading onto them. 
So I'll just start building some of that, make that quite dark on those bits. There's two bits coming down here. A bit on the end of the lock itself. And this also then disappears where the lock is going behind it here and the lock gates from the bit behind disappears into... Thank you very much. <laughs> And again, while I've got those on the brush, use the same dark tone into that water to do its reflection. And again, another one down here. A little bit lighter into that reflection there. It's not quite so dark as the gates at the top. So I'm using this quite strong dark now for putting these little bits of detail. And again, while I've got some on the brush, do the reflection, just a dash or two into the water there. And then that one comes up on this side. Comes up to that post, up and away. A little bit of dark. And then you've got these bits behind, so you put a hint of those in that's got behind here. It starts to disappear into the background. Um, just a few more reflections down here. A reflection of the wall itself because that's quite dark on the edge of the, the um, wall of the, the canal and the big dark bit behind here and then we've got another little bit of darks as the rest of them disappear into the background and again just a few more little dashes now this is this is really dark on this side so you continue to start to with watercolours you have to work from all the, the light bits gradually building up the dark bits behind them putting a few more of these reflections in that wall's quite dark across there a few little bits of shadow here and there now a little bit of bluey grey A bit of bluey grey underneath the locks themselves and on to the white bits they're not actually completely white they've got a little bit not quite that dark don't watch that bit clean where I suck the brush we don't do that really a little bit of blue onto the shadowy bits here get that to work just want to smidge in the bottom edge of those around the sides of those just to the lights coming from behind it so it's just catching the top edges of the bits on there some shadows underneath the lock itself. And for a quick sketch, probably wouldn't do an awful lot more. Let's see, that's quite dark in there, isn't it? And then, magic pen, if in doubt, if it's not coming together, pull it all together just with your lock gates bit of pen work on it. This is you get out a jail card free because then it just tightens it all up again. So with if I'm using a pen I wouldn't do the um, water with it, just the main lock gates. The main bits of it around the front here. And I'll probably Nice and dark into those. The railings and things at the back there. Start into that tree because it's close to you. The rest I wouldn't bother with. And leave it something like that. Okay, little sketch for a, a little watercolour, not the best, but uh, at least it will give you an idea of how to do something. All right.